Hi, I'm Allison Moskowitz. I'm from the Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center, and I was asked to answer the question, what are the latest treatment advances for Hodgkin lymphoma? So the treatment for Hodgkin lymphoma has evolved significantly over the past 30 years. In, uh, originally, uh, the, the treatment involved just radiation therapy until combination chemotherapy came along and uh, was shown to be able to cure hot, advanced stage Hodgkin lymphoma. The earliest regimens we used was MOP chemotherapy until we found that ABVD was superior to MOP with regard to progression-free survival as well as tolerability. And later on, uh, more intense regimens became available, such as Escalabia COP, which was developed in the 1990s by the German Hodgkin Study Group, which showed, which was found to be uh, associated with an improved progression-free survival compared to ABVD. However, studies have not been were not able to show that there was a survival advantage of this more intense therapy. Based upon this, ABVD has really been the preferred regimen for since really the 1970s for advanced stage Hodgkin lymphoma. Now, one of the recent advances, uh, and, and maybe not that recent anymore, uh, was the introduction of pet adapted therapy. So it was recognized that patients who are getting full course chemotherapy with ABVD, such as six, such as six cycles, if they are pet negative after two cycles of ABVD, they're likely to have a, a very good chance of cure. Whereas if they're pet positive after two cycles of ABVD, their chance of cure is much lower. Um, and as a result, uh, this, this led to studies evaluating pet adapted approaches. Um, in particular, the questions were, if someone has a negative PET scan after two cycles, can they get less therapy? And if they have a positive PET scan after two cycles, do they need more intense therapy? Uh, and one of the most important studies evaluating an approach like this was the Rathel study, um, which showed that for patients who have a negative PET scan after two cycles, uh, they, they can actually safely get rid of bleomycin for cycles three through six of ABVD and, and without hurting the tolerability or without hurting the efficacy of the regimen, um, but actually significantly improving the tolerability. So the treatment as per the Rathel study, this a pet adapted approach um, has been our treatment of choice uh, most recently. Um, and I'd say that now this has, there's been a new major change that, that, is cha that has impacted that. Um, and that major change has been the introduction of new drugs for Hodgkin lymphoma that have really changed the landscape for both frontline as well as advanced stage disease. Uh, those drugs include Brentuximab vidotin, the antibody, the anti-CD30 antibody drug conjugate, um, and then the additional drugs, um, the anti-PD1 inhibitors, and, and the PD1 uh, targeting agents, nivolumab and perbolizumab, have also significantly changed the landscape for Hodgkin lymphoma. Uh, the PD1 inhibitors are not yet incorporated into the frontline setting, but Brentuximab vidotin now is standardly incorporated into the frontline setting for advanced stage disease. And the reason for that is based upon the Echelon 1 study. So Echelon 1 was a large randomized study with over 1,300 patients, where patients were randomized to either six cycles of ABVD or six cycles of brintuximab plus AVD. And these were all patients with advanced stage disease. Um, and the primary endpoint of this study was modified progression-free survival at, um, at two years. And initially, the results of the study did show an improvement in modified progression-free survival for the patients receiving brintuximab plus AVD. Uh, the, the difference, though, was kind of modest. Uh, originally, the, the results showed that 80, the, the difference was 82% modified progression-free survival versus 77% for the patients who received ABVD. Um, and there was no survival advantage seen at that time. Um, based upon these results, there wasn't as much enthusiasm in adopting brintuximab plus ABD as frontline for advanced stage Hodgkin lymphoma. And the reason was is because there is some additional toxicity associated with the regimen, such as peripheral neuropathy. And there's also the need for using growth factor, uh, such as uh, pegphilglastrum with the regimen. 
um, because of the risk of neutropenic fever with, with BVAVD. Now, over time, we've seen updated results from the Echelon 1 study where we've seen that the progression-free survival at three years and five years continues to look um, it continues to show an advantage for the patients who receive rituximab plus AVD. And now, uh, just at, ASC, at this past ASCO, we saw the updated results from the study with six-year follow-up that now actually shows a survival advantage for patients receiving brintuximab plus ABD uh, compared to ABVD. These findings are really historic as it's uh, been, it is um, very difficult or it's almost unheard of to see a survival advantage in a, in a study evaluating Hodgkin lymphoma because we are there, because the chance of cure actually for patients who relapse is very high. We, we are very good at, um, we, we, we have very high cure rates for patients who require second line therapy. Um, so seeing an, a survival advantage for patients receiving in, in the frontline setting for advanced stage disease um, is, is, um, is, is really um, quite impressive um, and hasn't been seen in a study for Hodgkin lymphoma in, in several decades. Um, so at this point, uh, based upon these updated results of the Echelon 1 study, uh, I'd say that uh, brintuximab plus AVD has become the standard approach uh, for patients with advanced stage Hodgkin lymphoma. Um, and now uh, some of the questions that remain are whether or not we should be using uh, interim PET to modify treatment going for patients getting six cycles of BVAVD. Um, we do see that um, patients who are PET2 positive in the setting who are getting BVAVD actually do better than how they would have done if they just got ABVD. However, there still is a slight reduction um, in their in their progression-free survival compared to patients who are PET2 negative. Um, other questions include, should we be incorporating checkpoint inhibitors, the PD-1 inhibitors in the frontline setting? Um, and there's an ongoing study comparing brintuximab plus AVD to uh, nivolumab plus AVD that will help answer this question. Um, also, what about early stage disease? Uh, right now, brintuximab plus AVD is I would consider standard for advanced stage disease, but in early stage disease, we don't have yet randomized studies that have uh, established uh, the use of these drugs, uh, either one, any of these novel agents in the frontline setting. Um, and I, I believe that it, and questions in, um, remain regarding whether or not we can use the novel agents as part of our frontline treatment to help us reduce the intensity of therapy or potentially um, allow patients to avoid radiation therapy, for example. Um, so this has been really an exciting time for Hodgkin lymphoma. It is really amazing that we are now seeing a survival advantage in a frontline study for advanced stage disease. Um, after many, uh, several decades, we are now changing the standard of care for frontline advanced stage disease. Um, and I look forward to additional studies to help clarify whether patients should be receiving checkpoint inhibitors in the frontline setting um, and whether we can be using these novel agents to help modify therapy um, and select the most optimal and best toler tolerated therapy for each individual patient. So thank you so much for your attention.